We're going to talk today about emotional eating and five steps that you can take to start to overcome emotional eating. I think the biggest issue around this, and I won't even, don't even want to call it a problem, but the biggest issue around emotional eating is the fact that you can give someone a fitness plan. You can give them a nutrition plan. I can calculate your macros for you. We can do all of that, but if we don't address the underlying stresses that you're going through in your life, the underlying um, issues that you have going on, it's gonna be really hard to stick with any kind of a plan long-term. So, so emotional eating, it's turning to food for comfort. It's using food in place of dealing with your emotions. It's gonna happen most often when you are feeling your weakest emotionally. So, and it can also be conscious. It can be a conscious thing that we do. It can be something that you know you're doing it, or it can actually also be unconscious. It can be something you don't even realize you're doing. You're just eating to eat. So, um, being unaware in itself is an issue when it comes to trying to overcome emotional eating. Have you ever been in a situation where you started eating something? Like maybe it was like chips or um, potato chips or tortilla chips or something like that. And you're sitting there eating it and maybe you're talking, maybe you're doing something else. And uh, you know, a couple minutes goes by and you realize like you've been eating and you didn't even notice. So that's also part of it, an awareness to just eat to eat. It's the first step that you're going to want to take in overcoming emotional eating is becoming aware. So becoming aware of the fact that you do do it. We all have done it at one time or another. Some people struggle with it more than others. It's not something to be embarrassed about. It's not a taboo subject, okay? This is something we all struggle. When you sit down for a meal, you're not watching TV, you're not doing a hundred other things, you're eating in that time, you are 100% present in that time and place and enjoying your meal. Another part of becoming aware is admitting it to yourself. Admitting to yourself that you do emotionally eat and releasing the embarrassment behind it, releasing the guilt, not being embarrassed and allowing yourself to admit that you're human, right? We are human, We're not always gonna be on our A game and that's okay. And step number two is dealing with your problems. It's allowing yourself to process anger, sadness, hurt, all of that. In our society, we have been taught from a young age that bad feelings, we don't want to feel those. We, we don't want to feel bad, an inability to tolerate bad feelings. Step number three is really important and it's identifying your triggers. Is it a person? Is it a thing? Is it a situation? Is it a group of people? Is it um, an event? It can be so many things. Um, emotional eating can be you have to publicly speak at work and you're petrified. So that morning you're like mowing down on Doritos, right? Um, it can be that you're super, super tired. I'll just tell you me. Super tired, low on sleep. Your kids are super clingy and you feel stressed to your max. Sign your trigger and what sets that off for you is going to be really important. I highly recommend getting out a journal, getting out a notebook and writing those things down. On Tuesday you had a work meeting and then after that all you wanted was ice cream. You weren't hungry, you just wanted ice cream. That's emotional eating. Feel stressed and start to really allow yourself to feel those feelings. Maybe you were embarrassed, maybe somebody called you out, maybe you made a mistake. You know, it can be so many things. Once you start identifying those triggers, you're going to be that much closer to being able to overcome it. Number four is kind of two parts. Learning to love yourself. It's learning to admit that you're human and that it's okay that you emotionally ate. It's okay. Learning to love yourself through all stages and maybe you're not at your goal weight. Maybe you, maybe you hate how you look, but find something about yourself to hold on to. Find something about you that you love and try to dig deeper than just the physical try to dig deeper than well i like my butt think well i like that i'm really patient or i love that i when i'm with my kids i'm 100 percent present you know things like that things that are not on the outside and we are the most susceptible to emotional eating when we feel bad about ourselves step number five which is creating an action plan start to change the things that led to the emotional eating in the first place and then putting some strategies in place that are going to help you overcome it later on because guess what it's going to happen 
you're going to emotionally eat at some point or another. Um, it, this is just what it is. So if you can learn to accept that, that there are going to be bumps, there are going to be failures, it'll help your mindset get ready for it. Instead of saying, like, being afraid of failure, guess what? Every failure that you make just gets you closer and closer because if you learn to persevere through the failures, that's when the magic starts to happen. You guys, I'm not the most talented woman in the world. I'm not the most talented fitness trainer that ever lived, okay? But if there's one thing I've learned how to do, and it's been hard, okay? It's been so hard, is I have not stopped. You start to learn that when you're feeling upset or angry or sad, that it's not worth it to lose any ground on overeat. Love you ladies so much. Let me know if you need anything, you know, message, email, whatever you need and have a great day.